Hello, it's Jamie, and today I have a very special book that I want to introduce you to. It is Adoniram Judson, Bound for Burma. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this book series, Christian Heroes Then and Now. It's a phenomenal series. They go over servants, <laughs> Christians who have answered the call to give their entire life to Christ and the adventures they go on and the sacrifices they make. It's just a really good book series. I would recommend this series, not just Adoniram Judson, but if you see this anywhere, this series anywhere, no matter the name on the cover, I guarantee it will be a phenomenal read for you and your family, personally or for your kids. It, excellent, excellent series. But this one is about Adoniram Judson. And I just want to start off by saying spoiler alert. Okay, I'm going to give you a quick run through of his life and what the book talked about and things that impacted me and my kids. But there are spoilers. So if you don't want the spoilers and you actually want to go read the book without knowing what happens, I suggest you go ahead and turn this off and go buy the book because it's worth it. Um, it'll build your faith. It'll be an inspiration. It will bring tears to your eyes. And I just, I highly recommend it. Anyway, so Adoniram Judson, as a boy, he was very smart. His dad was a pastor and he had a lot of siblings. And one of his siblings was a young girl, a baby, a six months old, six month old named Mary. And she died as a baby. And when that happened, Adam and I really struggled with that. He didn't want to be, he didn't want to follow a God that would let a baby die. And he didn't tell his parents because his dad being a pastor, he just kind of lived his life and pretended that he was a Christian when he was not. And he went to college and he met this guy, I can't remember his name, they, be, they became close friends and together they were, they became deists. And after school, they parted ways and Christianity was still tugging on Adoniram, but he was just having trouble accepting it. It did not seem logical to him to believe in Christianity, but he found out that his deist friend from college passed away and that really had a huge impact on him because this man didn't believe in God and it really made Adoniram struggle with what he believed. He was feeling pulled to Christianity and he met with these professors that worked at Andover Theological Seminary and they were very patient with him. He asked them a lot of questions and they said, well, if you want, you can come to our seminary, not as a Christian, but as an atheist who just wants to study the Bible more. And he resisted that idea for a little bit, but eventually he was like, okay, I'll go. And he did. He went as an atheist who was just curious about Christianity. What are the ins and outs of it? Is it plausible as something to explain all of this? Because he didn't want to accept something just emotionally. He wanted the, the facts. He wanted the, the apologetics behind it all. So he studied at Andover Theological Seminary for a full two months. He studied the Bible in the original Hebrew and in the original Greek. And he came to the conclusion that this stuff is for real. Now, when I say studied, it wasn't like he went to work or he went to class and then like for a little bit when all that was done, he studied. No, like he dove into these studies. It was very important to him. It wasn't like a flippant thing to him. He studied the Hebrew and the Greek of the Bible and he came to the other side of that believing this is for real. This is not a fantasy. It's logical. It makes sense. It is real. God is real. And he became a Christian in 1808. And just a year later, he heard of and read of Burma. 
right when he heard of Burma, he was interested. But the more he read of, of Burma, the more he was convinced that that is where God wanted him to go. That is where he was called. So he told his family that same year and the following year, he helped organize a missionary organization to send them out to go to Burma. He met Anne, who was going to be his first wife, and he was off. It took a long time for him and Anne to actually get to Burma just because of financial stuff and sorting everything out and random things that would happen and, and set them back, but he did not give up. He truly believed that God wanted him to go to Burma, and he just kept going in that direction. Um, he went through a ton of stuff in his life trying to reach the people of Burma. It took him 12 years to make 18 converts. His ship was attacked by privateers. He had a bunch of personal sickness. His kids had sickness. His wives had sickness. His associates had sickness. Missionaries that he worked with. The one missionary that he worked with ended up losing his mind and jumping into the ocean. Here comes the spoiler parts. He lost two wives. Adoniram married three times, not because of unfaithfulness, but because his first wife, Anne, and his second wife, Sarah, both died because of illnesses they contracted in Burma. And his third wife, Emily, she died just a little bit, a couple of years after Adoniram died because of illnesses that both of them contracted in Burma. He had a bunch of kids, five of which passed away. I think six made it to adulthood. It was just, it was a very hard life, but it was a beautiful life. I, I know it doesn't sound like that. People hearing this would be like, wow, I do not want to live that life. But it was amazing reading his stories and how his heart would be breaking and the only thing that he would continue doing is reaching these Burmese people. Two of his greatest accomplishments was that he translated the Bible into the Burmese language. And I think it is still the only Bible that is in their language today. And he did that. And he also translated a new Burmese to English or English to Burmese dictionary for future missionaries to use in Burma. It's a beautiful testimony. And he actually was able to see people come to Christ during his time in Burma. There are thousands of people over there now who are Christians. But during his time while he was there, he only got to see a small part of that. He saw 18 people in the, those first 12 years. I'm not sure the exact number within his lifetime that he was actually able to witness, but that number has ballooned, has, has grown since his death. And it's because of what God did in his life in Burma, because he was willing to sacrifice his comfort, even his family. I know that a lot of people in America would think that is insane, that, that it's not worth it. Why would you sacrifice your, your own health and your family's health for these people that you don't know, and you don't even know if they are going to accept Christ. But Adoniram was very eternally minded, and his wives were eternally minded. And because of their willingness to be obedient and to let Christ and the Holy Spirit to move through them, they were able to do the Lord's work. My my kids loved this book. They were inspired by it. Their their little minds were inspired by it. And it was just a beautiful testimony of a, a life laid down, completely laid down for the gospel. Here in America, I don't know where you're watching from, but I'm in America. We think of laying down our lives as like not watching certain shows or not reading certain books or not going to clubs or not doing these certain things. Um, you know, to go further, reading your Bible every day or praying every day, serving your church, going out and preaching the gospel in America. For Adoniram, laying down his life was literally 
completely laying it down, like leaving America, or maybe he was in London, I'm not sure, but leaving his home to go to Burma, to give up all comfort, to give up all stability, to give up all plans. He was just completely like, let's go, Lord, wherever you lead me, I will follow. I will do it. And it was amazing. It is a perfect picture of God's riches versus the world's riches. Adoniram completely gave up the world's riches in order to serve the Lord and to get heavenly rewards. I highly recommend the book. Even if you watched this entire video and got those spoilers, I still recommend you read the book. There's so much more in it than I just gl glanced over right here. It is a powerful testimony, an inspiration, and it'll make you think. It'll make you want to push your faith to that level of obedience that Adoniram did. And I, I encourage you to look this book up. It is Adoniram Judson, Bound for Burma by Janet and Jeff Beng, I think. Um, all their books look like this. The, the brown trim. I think the lettering changes depending on what book you're getting. But um, Christian Heroes, The and Now. Highly recommend this series. Highly recommend specifically this book. It is very good. And... <laughs> that's all I got for you today. I didn't know if there was something else that I wanted to say on that, but I think I covered everything. I hope you're doing well wherever you are. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.